And that will do it. LBSU is three straight national champions. The three-peat has been completed. This season has been quite the run. We are no doubt the best team in the nation, and we solidified it with this. Well, UCF's basketball quest for an American Athletic Championship came to an end in the first round of the tournament last night. And now the team will also be searching for a new head coach. Team officials announced that they fired head coach Donnie Jones last night. The team finished with the season with a 12-18 and record and a 188 overall record in six years under Jones. It turns into a turnover by Dre Fuller. Another one, four now to start, and a three-pointer goes up. Zise gets it out. Here's Jeffries, another three. Oh, and he's feeling it tonight. We didn't think it was going to be like this. Fuller's got a career-high 11 rebounds as Perry puts UCF in front. Williams, count it. For this game, who's going to pull it out? Williams dumps it inside. Bucket is good. And they battle. Now they're battling their way to the semifinals of the American tournament. Can they That's finish it against Houston point. tomorrow? And that shot from half court is going to do it. And it's Memphis that wins it. 70 to 62 to advance to the semis to take on Houston tomorrow night. Hey, coach. Nothing serious. I just wanted to reach out to you and tell you Welcome to Orlando. Welcome, everybody, to the University of Central Florida and the UCF Knights Dynasty. We are back on NCAA Basketball 10. And today, we start a new journey with a new school. We are led by head coach, Coach Wright. You will get familiar with his story very, very quickly, but he is an old school NBA player who is looking to go to the college basketball ranks to start his coaching career. Now, let's get into the roster right away. At point guard, we have Jack Maccabee, a playmaking point guard who will play a little bit of every single role on this team. He can actually post up as a point guard. He can score the basketball, but he's really going to be looking to distribute and even rebound at a pretty good clip for a guard. At the two, Antonio Johnson is a pure shooter, and he's going to knock down a lot of threes this year. Watch out for him to possibly be our leading scorer. He is also excellent on ball defensively with 91 steal as his rating. At the three and at the wing, Larry O'Neal is a crafty guy. He is a lefty who can really put it in the basket and he can get to the basket at any point he wants. He just has an array of moves and it's not gonna be where he blows by you where he's gonna uh, cross you over. He's just going to make you look silly just by being fundamentally sound. Now at the four, we have Mangani Buangi, who is going to be a guy that we actually rely on to be our hustle guy. Now, I love him because he has excellent instincts getting after rebounds and playing defensively. Well, our big man is going to be a senior, one of the few seniors on our team, and Domas Darkunas, who's going to be a guy that really skies over everybody and snags those boards. He's going to be our break starter. He's going to be our outlet passer. He's going to be a pretty good player here in year number one. But watch out for him to really be the leader on this squad this year. Now, let's talk about our bench, and we have a lot of guys coming off our bench. First is Jay Henry, the sophomore who really can put together an array of moves and have a pretty high potential with this team. And I think that this guy is going to be quite the impactful guy because I'm going to have him on the floor in late game situations, defensive situations, and sometimes when we just need a bucket. Then there's the undersized center, Nash Kolchek. He's going to be a guy that's really going to be our center when we play small ball. 
and he can really, really get to the basket with ease versus bigger opponents, obviously, because he can use his athleticism to his advantage. Big guys are going to be too slow to keep up with him. Well, our backup point guard and more of kind of a combo guard is going to be Cody Stanley, a guy that actually is very, very comparable to Jack McAbee. He can hit the three ball. He can also distribute. He can play defense as well. He's going to be a guy that's going to be an all around guy. Well, number 22 is one of the most exciting players on our team in Jordan White. He reminds me of Russell Westbrook. I don't think there's a much better comparison than that because when he gets the ball and he's going down the court on a fast break, you better watch out. He might throw it down on your biggest guy on the squad. He has no fear. Darian Edwards is an interesting guy. He can knock down the three. He can also distribute. He's going to be a guy that comes off the bench and is going to contribute in a lot of different ways. Then we move on to another kind of forward we have on our team and Devon Bands, who's going to be one of those high potential ceiling guys. He has good size and he really can do everything. He can shoot the three if he has to. He can rebound pretty well. He can defend your best player. He's going to be a guy that I'm really going to depend on off the bench. Then there's the guy at the end of the bench. It's Milo Yarbrough, a guy that is a little smaller, 5'9", 5'10", with his shoes on, but can really shoot the three ball. So you got to watch out for him if he does get in. His size is definitely something that we really, really need to watch out for. Well, we have some reserves here. Johnny Graves is on the end of the bench, but he's going to have his opportunity down the road. But we will see how this team ends up doing. Now, for the sake of this series, UCF has been disappointing for the past few years, and the NCAA has decided to make some changes. They have actually promoted High Point from the Big South into the Conference USA and demoted UCF into the Big South. So we are going to have to earn our way back to the top and really put together a good string of seasons in order for us to kind of shine a good light in the NCAA's eyes. Now, I want to talk about school pride. Now, if you are a fan of my channel in the LBSU series we did last year, school pride was something that I struggled with because the crowd never got bigger. UCF is perfect. They start out with a decent crowd right away, and I won't be upgrading any facilities because it does give you an unfair advantage with uh, training. So I am going to keep this all the same, but we will try to upgrade our crowd in those challenges. So let's just talk about more of the logistics here. We're going to run a motion offense and we're going to kind of switch between the Princeton, a dribble drive offense in the triangle. We're going to kind of run all three and we're, we want to give different looks to teams and our half court offense is going to be potent. And that's one part of our squad that I want to really, really shine that half court offense and being able to score with anybody and having anybody erupt at any given day. So let's hop into the first scrimmage here, the white and black game. And we will see what this UCF team looks like on the court for the first time. Obviously, you can't fix this in the game, so I made it so that the backups are on the white team and the starters are on the black team. But really, nobody really has a solidified starter spot. These are just placeholders right now. So let's get into this action as we check out our team for the first time here on the hardwood. The black team wins the first tip. And now here we are on defense with the white. Cody Stanley we are controlling. And throughout this series, we will be controlling the point guard. As here's a jump shot. That's Larry O'Neal who knocks that one down. He scores the first two points of this scrimmage. Sold out crowd here in Orlando. Here's another jump shot. This is Darkunas who knocks that one down. The only senior who's really going to be on the floor this year. Pass inside to Nash. Kolchek, and that one will be a foul by Marcunas. Kolchek is six foot six. Marcunas is about seven feet tall, so there's a huge height difference in this matchup. Here is Kolchek going to the free throw line. 
we will be tweaking the free throw setting a little bit. Th this game is pretty hard to shoot free throws in, but you can see we're getting used to it there. We knocked down one of two. Here is Devon Bands handling the ball. Crossover, dunk in traffic over Mwangi in that one will be the first poster of this scrimmage. And I can't wait to see what these guys look like against other opponents. Looks pretty back and forth so far. Here is Bands now after the steal by Stanley. A pass inside to Nash Kolchek. He throws it down the undersized center. Makes it a 5-4 game for the white team. Offensive board by Larry O'Neal. He gets his own board and he puts it back up. 6-5 back and forth game so far. Here is number 22 off the bench. Jordan White passing it over to the left side. That is going to be Jay Henry who gets fouled on that one. I think the length of Henry is really going to be an issue for other teams. He is a guy that is lanky, can get to the basket. Six foot seven. He shoots his first free throw. That one is short. He's not the greatest at free throws, but he will knock the second one down. And now it is a tie ball game. 8-6 game now. Here is uh, UCF going the other way, and that is a steal by Darian Edwards who gets that one in. The starters going up by four early with 10 minutes to go here in this first half as here is Antonio Johnson into the game for the Black, and it's an and one. Nash Kolchak gets called for the foul. Two on Kolchak so far now. He is an undersized center, so... He's going to want to guard those guards, the combo guards, the forwards. And he might draw some, I mean, some contact there. And here's a nice pass inside Mwangi. 8-0 run by the black team. And the starters starting to pull away a little bit. Here's Cody Stanley driving the lane. That one is a foul, foul on Darian Edwards. 14-8 game as here are the starters now with number two Darian Edwards. Handling the point guard duties, passing around the perimeter. Larry O'Neal, pass inside. Edwards knocks it down. He's got six early points, two of three from the floor. But here goes the white team the other way. Here is Devon Bands passing the ball around. Inside to Kolchak, back out to Cody Stanley. Looking to set up the offense, but Bands gets all the way. And a left-handed layup. That one is good. 16-10 to 10 game now. Here's a wild jump shot, rebound by Bands. He's got that length off the bench, and you know he's going to run it the other way. Pass to Jordan White, who has no fear with the contact and gets that layup to go. It's back to a four-point game. 17-12 as the black team leads this one. The starters, here's a three by Darian Edwards. It's off, but here is Dark Hunas coming in. Mark Hunas coming in. I guess that will might be his nickname, Dark Hunas. And he gets the board and the offensive rebound. And look at the black team starting to knock down shots. It's now a nine-point game. Here is Jay Henry now. Looks like he's dribbling around the double team. Out to Milo Yarbrough. He comes off the bench and knocks it down. A 21-15 game. And the white team still making it close. Here's some defense being played. All the way up the court. Yarbrough one-on-one. -on -one, and he gets the layup to go. It's back to a four-point game here as the backups are staying with the starters. Another steal. Jordan White tries to take it coast to coast and a wild layup off of the side of the backboard. Jordan White is going to be a guy that we have to watch out for because in fast break situations, that's what he's going to do. He's going to be a little wild. But here he is passing inside. Milo, five foot nine in the post. He's got seven points today. Ten seconds left in the first half. Here's a missed layup by Mwangi. And here go, goes the bench the other way. The second unit. Here is Milo with a three and almost nails that one. And that's how we will go into the second half here. How about the second unit? Giving the first unit some run for their money. They're shooting about 37% from the field as the black team. The white team shooting about 30%, just getting their feet wet, you know, getting used to the chemistry. And now here we go, second half action. And here 23 to 19, and Larry O'Neal knocks down a triple here to start the second half. And now it is a 26 to 19 game. Here is Milo inside, he gets fouled by Mwangi. How about the five foot nine Mar Milo 
getting fouled. And now here comes the black team the other way. We will be switching to control the black team in the second half. Here is a pass after a steal inside. Darian Edwards gets the left-handed layup. And now it is a 28-20 game. Pass inside to Jay Henry. Nice play that time. Nice pass. You know, one thing I like about Bands and Henry, they both have length. They're both going to kind of play a similar role. It's good to have two guys in that role just in case. You never know. Here's a steal this time from Henry, but Narcunas gets it back. And he goes to the lane. He's seven foot. It's going to be tough to block his shot. Here's Mwangi with the wild shot. This is a rebound by Marcunas on the white team. And here's a pass inside. This is Bands all the way. It's an end one. And how about Devon Bands, the freshman? He gets the contact and the foul. Foul on, foul on Antonio Johnson. And now it is a four-point game. Marcunas over himself. And now it is a 31 to 29 game here. About nine and a half to go. Pass outside. Larry O'Neill. He knocks it down. 34 to 29 game for the black team. And now here we go. Back to a two-point game now. 34-32. Darian Edwards in the corner. He knocks it down. We're trying to get everybody shot down and getting getting used to that. And I can see the shooters already. Darian Edwards can hit, hit some threes. Antonio Johnson can hit some threes. You already know Milo Yarbrough. Here is Johnson stepping back. And he pulls up four. The three-point shot, 40-32 to 32 at that point. Now we have it to about three minutes to go. Darian Edwards, has he been impressive so far here in the scrimmage? He's not an actual starter, but coming off the bench, and look at Jay Henry. Anything you can do, I can do better. He gets to the lane and one with the left-handed layup and the contact. Good drive by Henry. He's got six early points, and now we have it down to about three and a half to go. Edwards up the court. He steps back and just shoots the three, and he is on fire. Back up to an eight-point game now. But the white team crawling their way back. Here is Henry handling the, handling the point guard duties, trying to get around Darian Edwards. This time driving the lane. He gets the contact over the smaller Edwards and gets it to go. It's now a two-point game with about a minute to go. The white team, Henry, drives to the lane. It's a tie ball game, an 8-0 run by the white squad. And now here we go. Rebound by the black squad. We go the other way. 25 seconds to go. Here's Edwards. Crossover dribble. All the way to the basket and throws it down. How about Darian Edwards? He has just been impressive. And you know what? He could be making a statement to possibly be in the starting lineup. And now here we go. 20 seconds to go. The second unit is going to hold for the last shot. 15 seconds and counting. Jay Henry who's been their leader so far. We send the double team at the top, and it's a steal. How about the hustle guy, Bangani Mwangi? He comes up with the steal, a clean swipe at the basketball, and the black team holds on to win the scrimmage. What a way to start this series with the black and white game. Gotta love it. Hope you guys enjoyed that scrimmage there. I want to get you guys familiar with the squad, and here is what our schedule will look like. One thing I love about NCAA Basketball 10 is that you can't just schedule anybody. They have to accept your invite. You just saw right there. I tried to get Miami at home. I could not. They declined it. But if we go there, they accepted it. That's one thing I love about this game. You have to get it to a uh, certain status level in order to get teams to accept your conference invite, or not your conference invites, but your schedule invites. That's actually pretty awesome. So here's what our schedule will look like. And in season number one, we have not been invited to any preseason tournament at all. We have a pretty tall, tall wall to climb here. And you can just see we're playing on All-American. These are our sliders. And I use these for the LBSU dynasty. I'm excited to use them for this dynasty and they produced very good gameplay that that's uh series went what eight nine seasons 
And that's the type of series I'm looking for here with UCF. I've always wanted to do a UCF series. I love UCF. Definitely am excited to get this underway. I hope you guys are as well. And if you ever need to reference these sliders, I will leave a link to these. And it's going to be a whole lot of fun. So what will we do in our first year here with UCF? I am excited. I hope you guys are too. And welcome to the UCF Knights Dynasty. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money, I got time to get it Target on me, so my car's a tenant Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it Bible in a dash and the stick is with it And I hit the 4-5 on the west side But I'm from the east side, that's how we slide That's how we ride, yeah, yeah, that's how we ride